Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name is Graham D. And I'm joined by the man that they call the Pez Modded Master League editing legend with help from Chucky Boy and other names of the community. They call him Baby! <laughs> Good morning! It's mighty fine Jersey. Yes, yeah, not too bad, man. Not too bad. It's a bit warm. I've got a window open and I've got a fan on, so hopefully there's not too much noise. I do have my noise suppressor on, so hopefully it's killing a lot of the. <laughs> And the Salford sirens in the background. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what did you get up to yesterday, Mister Golf? I mean, Golf Man. I mean, Mister Golf Course. I mean, uh, Bib. What did you get up to? Uh, well, I as soon as I finished playing Masters of the League with you, I went to golf and <laughs> didn't come back until like half seven, quarter to eight. Um, had some tea and then watched three episodes. No, two episodes of The Last Dance. So I've got two episodes left, which I will get done today. Um, but I didn't actually do that much else. I mean, I've been messing around with our Master League um, when Samantha went to bed for about two hours, trying to get a face for Danny Olmo. And I realized that the CRI pa uh, cracker, CPK cracker, or whatever it's called, the one that I was using was shit and it just kept <laughs> on failing and not exporting everything that I needed. Hence why uh, our Danny Olmo looked like a ghost. Um, because it wasn't exporting all the files that was inside there. However, I found a different one. I've done it this morning, and it works a dream. Aye. So, Christ knows. I, I mean, I spent so much time on that file maker trying to get it to work, and I just downloaded a new one, and it worked straight away. So, yeah, I don't know what I was doing wrong, or yeah. if I've not downloaded the the proper one. I don't know. But That's we've got that. working faces. I think it was was it Wednesday or Friday last last week. We were about to do uh, an episode of Masters of the League, and. Um, not that we do everything last minute or anything, but uh, <laughs> Bibi had spent shitloads of time downloading these packs and stuff, uh, these face packs, putting them into the game, obviously backing up the game, so if it goes wrong, you can fall back. Um, and we finished it like just before we went on air. Um, so I was like, okay, let's load it in, let's check the faces. Uh, and genuinely, for those of you that, that are as old as me, there used to be a Tree Boss Soft Mints advert um, with a character called Mr. Soft. I've got it on screen here. And this is what Danny Olmo's face kind of came out looking like. <laughs> this t terrifying thing. It was just like ice white sort of like <laughs> textures with just these yeah. eyes piercing through. It's like, <laughs> It wasn't the best, but uh, yeah, we rolled it back pretty much instantaneously because I've got backup files of stages of mega pack faces that I've put in. So like if I get to a face like, I tried last night with three different types of Danny Olmo um and two of them crashed my pc uh well crashed the game as soon as i got down to his face so there's something wrong there and the other one made him look like um i don't know silver surfer so <laughs> yeah this morning i tried a different file maker literally the same files are what i was downloading last night and it worked first time so yeah i've got backups in case we were playing today and i put mega packs in there so we've got like 700 faces um and two of them uh sorry three of our players now who were uh, non-faceless have have now got faces so everyone on our team who we've bought now has a face yeah, which is great yeah yeah um obviously we signed robin matondo yesterday for uh, for those of you that missed it bib showed me his face like uh, last night and he looks class so if you want to see that we will be going live with that straight after uh this episode of the scoop so when the scoop finishes we'll go offline for i don't know 10 minutes or so while we reset get green screened and everything and then we'll jump back on for wednesday's installment of masters of the league so if you want to see that you should see that you should try to get your faces done and put in the game uh we've actually been looking at that um it's just a matter of whether we try to do that now uh and potentially break things or whether we do that for um the next one or something but it may happen it may happen uh so see, that's my worry at the moment um we can put our faces in but I've like not included all the new Master League managers. So we've got like legend managers that I've got available to me that I, can, I don't want to put in yet because I don't want it to break our save. Because if it breaks our save, I don't think we'll be able to recover it. Yeah, I think the... Um, I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff with the Master League, uh, like legend managers, and they work just as well as the faces because they just, rather than adding them in, they replace yeah. the managers within, like, like you choose, like our chairman, uh, avatar dude. They all do. It'll yeah. just like replace him, um, kind of thing. So, yeah, um, 
it's just the same as like replacing a player face, apparently. But I, I mean, I say that I've not actually done it myself. So, but yeah, and then I'm saying that just the same as replacing the player face. We've been breaking our game in your PC for the last week trying to do that. So it's not <laughs> even that simple. <laughs> uh, but anyway, good morning, Chucky. Speaking of the devil, Captain what MT himself in the chat. Good morning, Enix as well, uh, who was, I believe, playing PUBG at 2 a.m. this morning. Really? Like, I mean, I, I believe well, yeah, he what was. What have you done to him? I don't. I don't know. Uh, where I got that information from, but but winner winner chicken dinner, motherfuckers. <laughs> was it Jordan messaging at two o'clock going, Graham, Graham, you still up? No, it was actually Graham. me messaging Jordan at about nine o'clock saying, Do you fancy some PUBG? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then it, it took us until two a.m. to get our first win, which usually we steamroller them. So yesterday was just we were getting screwed once again by circles, though, like circle moving hard shifting away from us. Yeah. So was it an update? Have they like put a new patch in that's just like doing you over a little bit? It's just RNG. Uh, we like we obviously get to get into the circle, look at what looks like is going to be. It's either a compound or a nice little hill or a ridge or something so that we can play to push into yeah. the final circle. And then it like we're on say southeast, and then the circle like hard shift to the northwest rather than just going central or something. Or mm. um, it'll just like it. It'll kind of stay on us. But where there's no cover, so we have to come down off our hill into the open, and then the the people that were on like the lowland that had nothing really going for them get the one rock that's in the in the circle, so they've got some sort of cover in it. So yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, it is what it is. That's battle royale. But uh, let's move on. Let's move on. So we'll uh, run through the news. We have quite a little bit, of, uh, quite a bit of news to run through, including the Sega stuff that we've been talking about. Sega apparently have something big. Something exciting, something along the levels of the PS5 first announce. Bullshit. It's not that big. It's not. So, so <laughs> it's we'll... pretty lame. Yeah, it is pretty lame. But before we get into that, let me do a few things first. First of all, I'm going to burp. There we go. Now that's off my chest, literally. Um, obviously, my name is Graham. This is Baby Wee uh, Ice Cream. And this, in true ice creamy fashion, is The Scoop, your daily dose of news from the world of video games and belong, uh, beyond. We go through the biggest, the best, and the breaking news stories live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads at 11 a.m. ish. <laughs> <It's> 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah. ish. Uh, each and every single weekday. So if you are live on Twitch, please feel free to get involved in the chat, as Chucky has done, as Dave has done, as Enix has done. Feel free to get involved. And it's important that you do because we turn this into a podcast that goes on YouTube first, a video podcast uh, that goes on ice cream upload, uh, youtube.com forward slash ice cream uploads. And then we turn it into an audio podcast that goes on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. So if you're live in Twitch, please feel free to use your voice on behalf of everyone else because they get to listen on demand, but they don't get to speak directly to Bibi. But now, let's jump into the news. So I'm going to rewind a little bit with the news. Like I said, this is something we did cover previously, um, but I'm going to set the scene set it. for a huge, huge, massive scoop that's going to break the world of video games. Not really. Japanese tech journalist teases huge scoop on the level of Wired's PS5 article for June the 4th uh, due issue of Weekly Famitsu. So, aka, that's supposed to come in, in Famitsu's June 4th issue. That's what I was trying to say there. So, revolutionary scoop will rile up the games industry, says the tagline. This is written by Sal Romano. Obviously, Sal Romano's reporting on what's been said. They aren't his words. Uh, so, during his latest YouTube live stream, Japanese technology journalist Zenji Nishikawa teased he will have a huge scoop on the level of Wired's initial PS5 article in the June 4th issue uh, of Weekly Famitsu. Uh, Nishikawa has a regular digital technology column in the magazine called Complicated conversation about games his scoop for the fourth oh my god why'd you keep writing it like that his scoop for the june 4 june issue for the for the issue there so his scoop is said to be revolutionary and will rile up the games industry nishikawa's comments are as follows my column in next week's issue of famitsu is crazy i got a huge scoop it's a world premiere article okay we've had one line and two words and it sounds phenomenal already and an exclusive oh he's pushing it even further it may not be nikkei or weekly bunshun but if you want to know if if it's a scoop that big it totally is it's a scoop oh from god. a game company that everyone loves an insane scoop last year wired got the exclusive story on playstation 5 right other media didn't it's that level of a scoop I interviewed a certain company's executive and technical staff. It's really revolutionary. Really? It's a revolution. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to read through the next couple of paragraphs and stuff like that. But that... You get the picture. Yeah. Setting the scene. 
I don't know if you got the point, but this revolution will be revolutionary. This exclusive will be pretty exclusive, and the scoop will be the scoopiest scoop that's ever been scooped. <gasps> Ooh, tasty. Are we all excited? Are we all strapped in? Okay, get ready for this. Da -da 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 -da. Sega is releasing a Game Gear Micro. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Really? <laughs> really? So, so the old Game Gear is something that's been around for 25 plus years, I think. And now they're making a smaller version of that, and that's revolutionary. Do you know what I mean? The Game Boy made the Game Boy Mini not long ago. Well, about 15, 16 years ago. That wasn't revolutionary. That was just like a nice little toy to have. This isn't revolutionary. This is an absolute shocker. You can't build it up like this. Because your credibility is, that person's credibility is pretty much just gone down the shitter now. How can you pr pr build something up to be the next biggest thing and it's just a smaller version of a console that came out 25 years ago? <laughs> it doesn't I, make any sense. It's not even that it's a smaller version of, of the console either. It's it's a postage stamp. That, that, that meme where you see, what's, what's the, uh, the Asian actor dude and he stood there like that looking at this tiny little piece of paper. That is the Game Gear. I'm, I'll see if I can find it in a minute, but... But yeah, anyway, let's jump in to the article. As Sega is releasing a Game Gear Micro, written by Luke Plunkett for Kotaku, the article says, To mark the company's 60th anniversary, Sega has decided to take one of its most not uh, notorious systems and re-release it in micro form. It's not the Dreamcast or the Saturn, though. Rather, it's the handheld Game Gear. It's launching on October the 6th for 4,980 yen, um, which roughly translates to 45 US dollars. There will be four colours available, black, blue, yellow, and red. The handheld is only 80 millimetres wide, while the screen is a tiny 1.5 inches across Jesus so, Christ. though it'll be a little easier to see if you pre-order all four handhelds at once what i'm just tell you like, why why would you pre-order four of the very same thing in different colors it's it like, has to be a collectible it has to be does it say the price of it uh 45 dollars 45 well dollars. yeah it's it's a collectible then and it's surely people aren't playing i mean it and go and carry on with the rest of the article. Yeah, it gets it, it does it does get worse. I mean, the fact that you have to buy four of them is is daft. But this is why. Uh, so uh, da, 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 da. it'll be it'll be a little easier to see if you pre-order all four handhelds at once, as you'll get a free replica of the original Game Gear's big window magnifying accessory. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the year 2020, and we are now able to watch video games through a magnifying glass. Wow! But it gets better! Not. Uh, now, for some bullshit, it says the article itself, that's not even my words, each of the four different colours comes with four different games installed on it. The black one comes with Sonic, Outrun, Royal Stone and Puyo Puyo Tsu. Uh, blue comes with Sonic and Tails, Gunstar Heroes, Sylvan Tail and Baku Baku Animal. Red includes Game Gear, Shinobi, Columns and the two Megami Tensei Gaiden games, while yellow has Shining Force, Shining Force 2, Shining Force Final Conflict, and Shining... No, no. Nazo Puyo Aruru Noru. Yes. <laughs> That's easy. easy for someone from Yorkshire to say, so there we go. <laughs> it's a ploy for you to want to buy all four in it if they're having one game installed on each one. I've, I've seen this before, and I can't remember what console it was that this happened for. I mean, it might not have even been for a console. It might have been for, like, one of them... Uh, you know, remember the LCD screens where it was the black, the black LCDs uh, on the yellow background. It was like, oh, I can't <laughs> remember the name of it, but they brought them out not that long ago, and it was one. It was like Street Fighter, but I can't remember the name of the fucking thing. It looked like a Tamagotchi. Oh a, my god, I'm never gonna Neo be able to Geo, find it. it? Someone, someone in the chat. Yeah, it was. Like, you could get like Neo Geo one, so you can get like um, Street Fighter, but it'll be the. What was the? The game's called, like, it was like an LCD background kind of thing, but it wasn't colour or anything like that. I don't know what they're called. It's just completely gone out of my head. Someone <laughs> in the chat must know what I mean, because I just sound like I'm rabbiting on here. Uh, no idea what you're about. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me do a quick Google and see if I can find what they were called. Old style handheld Jimmy video games. Do you mean like the old school stuff? Are you about something that's been remade? No, but they did remake them not long ago. Because they had like that's what I mean. The old sort of like game and watch Donkey Kong flippy things and stuff. Yes, like, that. like those kind of things. Yeah. 
Oh, trust it to not be on Google. I mean, I'm probably searching for... <laughs> LCD game thing! <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, it's about game watches. Game watches. Game watches. It was like in the 80s. What, Game & Watch? It used to have these really... Yeah, yeah, that's the one that I, I just meant. Game & Watch. Uh, game & Watch. Let, let me bring... Uh, yeah, Game & Watch. That's the ones. Uh, so I'll, I'll bring the, the Google search on screen so everyone can see. Uh, this is a Game & Watch. Um, which, ironically, this is something from... The year 1762. It's not. It's obviously an 80s product, but it has a bigger screen <laughs> than the new the, than the new 2020 Game Gear. Uh, so yeah, it's, it is it is quite bizarre. Let me let me let me bring that article back up again. Um, so this is the revolutionary, groundbreaking, revolutionary revolution that breaks all of the grounds that can be broken into little bits of ground. It was it the hype in that. That segment that was only one of three uh, paragraphs of hype as well by the way that we read out for this look at how tiny that is that is ridiculous uh it's, uh, buying even that the the sega big window it's like what what have you got there well this is my big window it doesn't even sound aspirational it's 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 bad it's bad i mean don't get me wrong for for, for a fiver it's not too bad. Uh, this tiny little screen that's pretty much worthless. These controls that are going to be impossible to use. Imagine trying to use that. You, it's like any tiny movement of your thumb on that thumbstick will just... That will change everything. I mean, not not that you can only go like up, down, left, right, because it's obviously Game Gear sort of things. I used to love the Game Gear as well. Let me just add that in. Uh, I remember playing fucking shit loads of hours on the Game Gear. Um, I mean, always plugged in because it ate through batteries like an absolute bastard. But still... Uh, Loved it, loved it. But this is just no, no. Um, it, I, the only time I'd probably get this is literally just for a collector's item, just to sit nice and pretty on the shelf. There's no way that I'm spending any time with it, really. I mean, for 45 sheets, you get for a 45 sheets for a video games console this day and age is getting you nothing, and that's exactly what you're getting. <laughs> it doesn't even buy you Call of Duty anymore, does it? Do you know what I mean? Call of Duty is 50, 55 quid, so, and you're buying a video game console for it. I am I am not a fan. Usually I like gimmicky stuff, but maybe it was maybe it's this, do you know what? It's it's probably the same thing as the Xbox gameplay stuff. I mean, I, I didn't mind that conference because I kind of expected that sort of stuff, but everyone that hated it was because of the the um the positioning. This is a game changer. We're changing the games with games that have been played but not played and that, and that was the it. They weren't the, they weren't the greatest games. Um they weren't uh, yeah, weren't the greatest games. They weren't really being played. It wasn't actual gameplay, so people got pissed off. This isn't a game changer. If it was like like nobody wanted a SNES Mini or a SNES Classic, nobody wanted a Mega Drive Classic or anything like that. But it was there. It was something. It was it was good to pick up. Jobs are good. And Eighty quid or whatever it was. Oh, that's a little bit of novelty. Bosh, we'll have that. This could have been not novelty, but for me, I, I was expecting. And instead of we got. <laughs> Yeah, it's not the same. Uh, Bibby is sounding a little bit miffed. <laughs> no, that's just Bibby. Um, I should, should... That, that's what it reminds me of. I just put, I just dropped the link. Uh, I mean, if I was going to buy any, I'd, just, I'd probably buy this oh, one. So yeah, I just yeah, dropped yeah, the yeah. links in there. Tiger Electronics. That's what I was looking for. The, there was there was um, Tiger, and then there was like Tato T A I T O. They used to do them as well. We had like a double dragon yeah. one as well, um, and it was just. Yeah, an, an LCD sort of like display sort of thing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You get racing versions, fighting versions, and whatever. Yeah. Crash, crash test dummies. Wow. What a throwback. But, but yeah, yeah uh, I'm fairly certain I had I actually had this Golden Axe one. Um, I remember them not being great, but there was products at the time, weren't there? Obviously, we've had a lot more since then. Um, still, uh, at my hands up in the air the psp is still the greatest for me psp is definitely the greatest handheld of all time um it, i don't think you got the credit that it reserved not the ps vita the psp was an incredible bit of kit just want to th point out this golden axe one that we've got on screen uh made in 1988 so 32 years ago and it has a bigger screen 
than the uh, 2020 Game Gear. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, okay, jumping back through the chat. Um, just wow, I need it. <laughs> it would take up less room. I don't think you're telling the truth there. Uh, I don't even think Japan holds the Game Gear as high as other handhelds. Uh, four games per Game Gear. I know that's that shit as well. Like, what if you want the Sonic games? Like, if you're all right with uh, the uh, the yellow one, if you're a fan of Shining Force, you get Shining Force, Shining Force 2, Shining Force Final Conflict, and then that one that I struggled to pronounce, Nazo Puyo Aruru Noru. Um, <laughs> I think you've nailed it. <laughs> smash. Um, so if you're a fan of Shining Force, boom, all those in one. But if you're a fan of Sonic, then you either choose the black one, which comes with uh, Sonic, or... The blue one which comes with sonic and tails you can't have both and it's just like and you absolutely know within five minutes of these being out these are going to be ripped up opened up people are having it so that you can import whichever roms and stuff you want onto it to play it anyway so like if if you are just a casual gamer that just wants something fun to play you'll just be like oh well i'll just stick it on onto my pc very usb and i'll throw sonic 3 in it instead rather than sonic or sonic and tails and jobs are good and uh, so why would you need to buy all four? The reason you need to buy all four is so you can buy the the magic window or whatever it was called, the big window, uh, the accessory that comes free when you buy all four, so that you can actually see it without being like, eh. so it's, it's it's not good, it's not good. However, you know, given let's 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 go back to the original article because there was a little bit added on to the end of it, which is an update, uh, which to me seems like it's only being added on because that's not gone down very well. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm missing uh, a lot of the uh, context of uh, the position of this article. But we'll jump back into it. So there's the... Uh, it's a huge scoop. World premiere exclusive. Blah, 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 that we've just gone through. Let's go down to... There was an update. 6th of the 3rd, uh, 2020 at 1.45am. Um, so the huge scoop teased by Nishikawa, is that Sega is doing research and development on Fog Gaming, a potential new game platform that could be utilised by Japanese arcades. Fog Gaming would repurpose arcades across Japan as part of the cloud, as well as channel arcade game machines, CPUs and GPUs, resulting in lower costs. This would provide ultra-low latency, and the con uh, concept is similar to Fog Computing. Players would be able to enjoy high-quality games, and arcades would be able to make money even after Sorry. business hours. Uh, so, so that is not that in itself. Is I'm struggling to put it into words. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. I genuinely was expect. I mean, look, we've lost Bibi. That's how disappointed he is. He's done a runner. Um, so yeah, the, apparently the update is that the 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 big news is for gaming, not actually that. Which is basically, I, I don't quite understand it a new game platform that could be used by arcades so arcades can allow you to play games that you're not playing on arcade machines uh isn't the point of going to an arcade that you're playing games that you don't have access to at home because if you're playing games in an arcade that you are accessing elsewhere or you can access them at home is that not that <laughs> i don't know i don't know anyway um will it have the tv tuner accessory if it does i'm in uh, yes, but then you need the the bigger window to watch the TV. Uh, it looks like my old CRT. It does. It does. That that does absolutely look like a CRT. There we go. Where is it? Where is it? The big window. Look at that. That is 100% the TV that you watched Coronation Street on in 1995. That is. That is the one. And if you weren't born in 1995, then what? Uh... Oh, okay. My phone's just buzzing. Uh... So back to the chat. Just looked at the original big window for the Game Gear. Looks horrific. Uh, Pez Bolt says if it costs one euro, it's fine. Exactly. One euro is maybe five. But 45, no. And 45 where you have to buy four of them to get the accessibility, uh, accessory that makes it usable. No. Um, none of the packages have Chuck Rock on them. So I'm out. <laughs> I don't even know what Chuck Rock is. Uh, let's, 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 let's get some education. Chuck Rock. What the hell? I have never seen this before in my life. Chuck Rock. <laughs> That's what I felt like this morning, waking up after my mega barbecue last night. Uh, I've never heard of that. So, Chucky Rock, no idea. Uh, who, th uh, who thought uh, there would be a handheld that could be equal 
or worse than the Engage. You love the Engage. Don't give it that. You you got the Engage and then got the sequel to the Engage. So, psh. Um, what was the sequel to the Engage? Like, like Engage Two. <laughs> it was. Did it make an Engage Two. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I think I think there was something else. Uh, Narky, uh, uh, David will be able to say before I probably type this in. Uh, yeah, because yeah, there was. It was just basically a slightly less jagged, a bit more rounder version kind of thing. Get out of here, Amazon Assistant. I'm not buying an engage. Uh, so, so you'd get like that one versus. So that engage 2.0 was that one, and then that was the uh, engage QD, and yeah, it it actually had more than most people remember because David single handedly kept them in business by buying them. Um, <laughs> Uh, someone with no credit uh, came out and said it's not the announcement. Something about Sega Arcade Cabinets getting a cloud service. Uh, yeah, that's what, that's the bit. I'd, I've just seen your comment now, but that's what we just jumped onto then. Fog Gaming, apparently. Uh, Why are they calling it Fog Gaming when Cloud Gaming is already, you know, a term that's sort of etched into the video game scene? It just it's trying to be different, isn't it? It's it's to rebrand it to sell it just to arcades i don't get the fog gaming thing if any, i mean we'll we'll move on here but if anyone finds anything that explains the fog gaming a little bit more then that'd be useful to me because it's like i say it doesn't make sense why would you go to an arcade which is not have and play games that you're not playing in the arcade because the arcade is using them through the cloud why would you go to an arcade yeah. to play something online and then it even says that you can arcades can make money when they're closed so what you're paying the arcade to play the games through the arcade but not at the arcade why don't yeah, you just play right. the games it's just it just sounds bizarre so yeah anyway. imagine going to somewhere like arcade club and then not going into the arcade room to go and play in the cabinets the na native cabinets with the original hardware from 30 40 years ago imagine going just, somewhere to arcade. Just like, yeah imagine going somewhere to arcade club and not that so like you say you're not touching the actual hardware and stuff paying 5 10 15 quid whatever it is to get your access and then sitting you down at a pc and then logging you onto your old computer at home <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck uh, uh, i had turtles on one of these things i swear you couldn't control it properly it just did its own thing uh inferior skills Banter. No, I'm joking. Yeah, no, that was the thing. Anything like that, you got about seventy percent control. The other thirty percent was just luck. <laughs> Hardware of the olden days. Sonic Spinball. Uh, what a game! I hated that. Uh, I, I love. I love pinball games anyway. But Sonic in a pinball game, yes, please sign me up. I hated it because they just. I'd, I'd start playing it, and then three weeks later, I'd realise I'm still sat there playing it. Uh, the world around me is falling to bits. My house is starting to like crumble and decay, and I'm like, I, I remember the only bit I remember is like, like landing in some sort of tank. Like you had to like spin Sonic around and land in a tag and a uh, tank, and then like release some sort of green oozy shit or something. I can't remember. Maybe it's not even that. Maybe my my brain's just merging it with something else. But no, yeah. that that sounds right. Um, I've got it on me. I've got it on me. Uh... I shown you a couple of weeks ago, didn't I? It was like a Sega Mega Collection. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was on that, so I got to play it again recently. But it's cheaters on that. Like, I don't understand. It, you can rewind and fast forward, so if you fuck it up, you can just rewind without losing a life. It's cheating, that. That was the point of having the lives. God. Uh, I watched Bullseye. <laughs> is, that, is that in reference to anything else, or just a statement? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at what you could have won. Uh, so David says the Engage QD, yeah, that's the one. He's still got it. Of course you have. Uh, I had an Engage for two weeks, says Jordan. I mean, it was decent. Don't get me wrong. I like, I love the concept of it, the Engage. The fact that you had a smartphone and a game system in one, and you could buy actual cartridges that you put in, just like a uh, a, a DS or whatever. But it just didn't get any support. There was like seven games or something for it. It just. Uh, uh, Chuck Rock and Columns were the only games I ever played in the Game Gear. Of course, columns. it was plugs. I hated that as well. It was it, it was what Columns was the least fun game in terms of it was it was like the game that I remember going around to play on my cousin John his Mega Drive, and we'd want to play like Columns was on a triple game. Yes, it thing. was, and there was like Italia ninety or something like that on yeah, it. Yeah, me and John were there wanting to play football or or sticking Altered Beast or whatever the hell the other games we had were. And my auntie Cheryl just wanted to play columns, and it was just like, wow, a blue block, 
diamond sapphire thing fell down from the top. I and there's it. another one. It wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. I loved it. Uh, you watched Cory on your CRT, tut tut. <laughs> to be fair, I did. Not not because I wanted to, but because I grew up in, in 90s Huddersfield. There was one TV and, and mum, mum and dad and whatever wanted to watch Coronation Street. I, I got like three o'clock till five o'clock when I got over from school, that sort of thing. That was it. Uh, I think they may, they will use unused or old cabs uh, as a server farm for the games out of hours. I need to understand this a little bit more. Yeah, I need I need to understand it a bit more. It it's apparently a game changer for the industry. It doesn't it doesn't resonate with me. I don't understand, so I need no. to understand if it's if it is a game changer. A game changer. It could be, could be, but as it sounds, it isn't. Uh, but anyway, let's let's put a pin in there. Let's move forward. Um, this is an article that I was discussing briefly with John last night. I tried to share with Bib, but Business Times shit itself, which is the place of our <laughs> next little bit of news. The PS5 console design details have been leaked. It's bigger and thicker than a PS4 Pro and more. David actually sent me uh, some details on this yesterday as well uh, from a tech-linked article, although I couldn't find that one, so this is the closest that I got. Uh, so thank you very much for that, David. Um... Uh, Sony recently confirmed that the heavily rumoured June 4th PS5 event is indeed happening. No, it's not. Uh, when was this actually written? June the 2nd. How do you not know it's not happening? Uh, okay, let's carry on. Uh, Sony would announce upcoming PS5 titles at the upcoming event, and some fans believe it might reveal the PS5 gaming console. Sony has not yet confirmed if it's going to announce the PS5, but a new report claims they've seen the digest of the Japanese gaming console and shared some of its details. Uh, David says I sent you the video. Yeah, we just... it's, it's hard sharing videos because you can get copyright strikes and stuff so we tend to try to go for the uh flat articles it's all right showing a bit of a trailer but showing a video article is where we it's hard to uh it's harder to have fair use on video content than it is on text content mr tassim and via see we talk about leaked industry news and tassim and via is there in the chat the most reputable leaker from inside the industry thick uh let's double c by the way uh, Sony has not yet confirmed it's going to announce the PS5 but a new report claims to have seen the design of the Japanese gaming console and shared some of its details the latest information about the design of the PS5 came from Reset Era which spotted the details from the Russian website Game Mag it looks like the site was provided with some of the deepest secrets of the PS5 by someone involved in its development the source as revealed by the Russian site is still active and at present is, a wor is working on a PS5 title the PS5 is not a slim gaming console shock horror new console no is not slim Oh no, it's almost like they can release a slim one later on. Ah, gasp. So the PS5 is not a slim gaming console according to the site. In terms of its thickness, it's twice as thick as the PS4 Pro. Uh, the Russian uh, site GameMag also revealed that the size of Sony's next generation gaming console is large... Uh, is large to house the working components and to accommodate the ideal cooling solution. In terms of design, it's nothing like Microsoft Series uh, based on the report, the PS5 sports a classic set-top box. It is square and symmetrical in shape with round edges, the site added. It looks like the design of Sony's next-generation gaming console is nothing like the earlier reported leaks. Well, obviously, they weren't leaks. They were just <laughs> pizza slice warmers uh, based on dev kits. But still, the site further described the PS5 as very fat, which could mean a slimmer gaming console could soon follow. Apart from this, the Russian site also disclosed that Sony has yet to dis uh, well, just use the word disclose a bit more if you want. Apart from this, the Russian site also disclosed that Sony has yet to disclose a couple of features. It added that the Japanese game giant would share an unusual detail. Uh, while the site did not reveal the details, it said that it claimed that revealing more would enable the company to identify them. All right, then. Uh, there's something amazing and different, but I can't tell you what it is, is what that mm. says, basically. So while the site yeah. did not reveal the details... It said that it claimed that revealing more would enable the company to identify them. A few weeks earlier, Sony filed a patent about a companion robot that has emotions, among other possible PS5 features. In other PS5 news, Sony confirmed that it is holding a PS5 event on June the 4th, 2020. How how have you not got this as being... When was this article written? What? Yesterday. How do they not know that it's been shelved for now? How do they not know this? Um, but uh, I think I'm just going to take this with a pinch of salt because it looks like someone's just written this well in advance and then just released it after the fact that the um, it was due to come out on the fourth. The it, well, the the event was due to happen on the fourth. It feels like this has been written 
quite a while ago. Yeah, it does. It does sound bizarre. Or they've just absolutely not. I mean, it's business times, so they've looked at the business side of things and they're not bothered about the uh, the uh, actual content side of things. So there's an event that's good for business. Um, I mean, the event not happening is, is potentially bad for business, so you'd kind of expect them to know. But 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 but, but, but. it doesn't sound like there's anything new in there. Like obviously, it's going to be bigger than I think the consoles have got bigger gradually. Anyway, so there was no surprise that it was going to be bigger than the PlayStation Four. Um, <clears throat> it's a, it's kind of a little surprise that it's a, it's going to be a, a lot bigger than the PlayStation Four Pro. But I mean, th- with the technology that we've got, it's kind of inevitable, especially with the size of what's uh, we've already seen the size of the Xbox uh, Series One X or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, <laughs> it's called it's called the X Series One X box series of X's boxes and series S's. Yeah it's going to be the size of the new xbox we've seen the size of it It looks like a tower for a pc so obviously the playstation was going to be same ish size give or take a few inches there and there um so i don't think that's new news there's nothing really in this article that states that they're not giving us new information we already know this kind of stuff but yeah it's, it's really weird that this right article was released yesterday unless it was before well it did they did they, I'm trying to think of the timeline now. So we covered on Monday that there was going to be something coming this Thursday, tomorrow. But when did the release that information say that there was something coming on Thursday? Was it Saturday or Sunday? Uh, Friday. So oh, right. So it was the week. Right. Okay. So it was days before. So they could have been sat on this article for a while and just not deleted that bit out. Yeah. Um, potentially. I think I think that's the case. Although uh, Tech Linked episode only came out on Monday, Tuesday. Uh, so it was a bit old. Um, yeah, well, that tech linked uh, uh, video <clears throat> will have been based on the same Russian stuff, so that will have only been fairly recently. So, so the the initial news for the PS Five event came out on Friday, but uh, let's let's have a quick through, see if I can see when the reset era news. Sun- Sunday, so yeah, Sunday. They could have, they, yeah, they probably started putting that together on Sunday, finished it on Monday ish or whatever, and then just spaffed it out yesterday, not realizing that everything's changed. Yeah. Everything. <clears throat> oh, where have they been? Have they been on, living under a rock? Looks like it. Looks like it. So, for the for those of you that missed it, um, also as Bib says, morning arms. Um, for those of you that missed it, uh, the PS5 will be thicker and bigger than the PS4 Pro, obviously. Uh, differing uh, bits of information. I've seen bits that have said it'll be 1.5 times the size. I've seen bits more like this cycle from Business Town saying it'll be double the size. They're taking that information from uh, a Russian uh, website, Game Mag. So, Game Mag. Uh, dot RU forward slash news. Let's have, a, let's have a quick look at their website. I'm going to have a quick look at it first to make sure it's something that I can show on the Tinted Webs. Uh, what was central? Uh, absolutely, all of the pop-ups. But let's let's have a look anyway. Um, PS5. What the PlayStation 5 looks like. An insider talks about the design of a new generation console from Sony. This is Google translated, by the way, so uh, it could be a bit dodge. Uh... Are you okay? Yeah, just just having a quick scan. So yeah, exactly the same as we've just seen in there. Um, different from the Xbox Series X, which is obviously more of a kind of a uh, a tower um this is more of a, a symmetrical rounded box uh bigger than what we have already if you've got a ps4 pro which means i might have to like start shuffling shit around because i might not be able to fit this into my cabinet and stuff uh bigger and thicker just how i like them consoles of course <laughs> says asim tanvia obviously <laughs> i mean you had me in the first half there not gonna lie <laughs> uh yeah, well, in Texas, it was three times bigger. Everything's bigger in Texas. I mean, you keep telling yourself that, Cal. No wonder you spend a lot of time in Texas. <laughs> uh, but anyway, 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 let's move on. Let's move on. The PS5 details are slowly starting to come out now. Um, no doubt we may see more. Uh, I'm interested to know. The one thing that does catch my attention, but also sounds like it could be clickbait heaven, is the there's something different. There is a detail that is unusual, or whatever the wording was that they used. But they can't tell you more about it because Sony will know what who said it. I mean, that interests me. Is what what is the different angle? Or I mean, surely if it's if it's a console specific angle, by them saying it, how will Sony know who said it? That's so. Yeah, yeah. 
it, this uh, this this also uh, almost stinks of the last article that we written where it's going to be super huge news that's bigger than the PlayStation Five launch and it's clickbaity as shit and it turns out to be one of the lamest console things that I've ever seen in my life. So again, I'm taking everything with a pinch of salt. Uh, we was uh, we was meant to be getting a look at something on Thursday that's obviously now been pushed back. I will wait to see what Sony released because the way that the media was going on was that the the developer console was going to be the console coming out so at the moment i'm kind of don't believe anybody i'll wait until they release very much the football in terms until you actually see the player with the shirt stood inside the stadium or behind a desk signing a contract i ain't believing shit damn right you got damn right uh but anyway let's leave that there let's move forward uh to something rather than stuff that that is supposed to be groundbreaking and turns out it isn't. And stuff that's supposed to be coming, but might or might not be. How about we talk about stuff that has been coming for a while and is finally here. Uh, we've played it on the channel. You've seen us be world-class and potato in the very same games on this, but Valorant <laughs> launches with a new agent map and mode. Uh, so Riot's free-to-play shooter also gets two launch trailers. Not just one trailer, but two. Uh, written by Tom Ivan. This article is from VGC, and it says, Valorant's launch day patch introduces a new agent, new map, and a new mode to Riot Games FPS. Mexican Agent Reyna is the latest addition to the 5v5 character-based tactical shooter, while Sage, Omen, Phoenix, Rays, and Jet have been given a number of buffs and nerfs. Uh, new game mode Spike Rush aims to deliver a, a fresh and more hectic flavour of Valorant, featuring shorter matches. Ascent is a new map set in Italy, featuring a large open middle area that both teams can fight over, while Split's mid choke point has been uh, restructured. What's the chances of that? Split being restructured? Maybe it was completely biased to one side. Anyway, uh... Oh, no, it's... Okay, my cookies are disabled, so yeah, I'm not watching those videos. Uh, Riot says the patch also contains improvements to hit registration and targets frame rate drops uh, some players have been experiencing. The devil's in the details, but know that getting performance where we want for all players is an ongoing process we hope to nail down in the next few patches. The firm revealed it was working on a competitive shooter codenamed Project A in October 2019, which we covered on the scoop, by the way, and before officially unveiling Valorant this March. Uh, so, anyone play Valorant? I know I was... Uh, I, I haven't touched Valorant for weeks because when we're on stream, I'm either playing PUBG... Or we're uh, balls deep into another episode of Masters of the League. So um, I've not had much time for Valorant. So has anyone kept up with it? I know Jordan has. And I know yeah. he, he says that the new map isn't particularly great. Um, I know Alps has as well. But I've got a funny feeling he's back in work. So I don't think we'll be hearing his opinion on it. But I know he's still playing ranked um, and enjoying it. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it need. I don't... They didn't need new game modes... Potentially, yeah, because I want to try and keep it fresh. Uh, but the, the take it, <laughs> making split more balanced was the main thing that they needed to do, because it was a bit of a joke. I'm not yawning, you're yawning. <laughs> I was about to say, is it? That's a fucking internet gone down. <laughs> no, I agree. Uh, split has been bad since very early on. It, it makes you wonder how it, they got it so bad. But but even still, it can happen. It can fall through. Some of the people that got testing it, uh, they have testing it, uh, may have been involved in it for too long, so they didn't mm. notice that it was becoming was biased. Fresh. Yeah, exactly. Like that, that phrase, you need to look at it with a fresh pair of eyes. Someone might be more qualified in terms of map design, level structure, esports prowess and experience. You might have m infinitely more experience than, than person B. But if you've worked with it through all the way through, you could be blind to some of the faults. Whereas someone coming in with that fresh pair of eyes might go, actually, well, that's broken to fuck. And then you go, oh, yeah, shit. So well, either way, um, the community fed back. It was only in a beta anyway, so fair play to yeah. him. Fixing it in time for the launch. Well done. Um, I say fix. I've not played it, so I can't tell you whether it actually is or not. But that's what it sounds like. Um, the biggest the biggest bit for me to point out, uh, Sage, Omen, Phoenix, Rays, and Jet have been given a number of buffs and nerfs. Uh, I think it was Rays is the one that I used, um, the one with the rocket launcher. Uh, if she's been nerfed, then no, which apparent, <laughs> apparently she will have done because every time I, I mentioned that I've used that one, people were like, absolute sweaty new player. I was like, I mean, I absolutely am, so you clearly don't know my abilities. But not only that, it was uh, everyone else had all the good ones already, so I had to, I had to choose between NAF1, NAF1, NAF1. Um, it, was either, it was either Rays or Brimstone, just so that I can hear you go, Molly, Molly, Molly. 
Uh, Are you sure he wasn't doing the voice acting in the game? Maybe, maybe I did. Maybe that, I did. That was really, really good. What was the um, the one that the 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 fucking fire hands electricy lightning dude, the one from London? What was it? He says, uh, "Play time's over. You're dead," or whatever like that. <laughs> I just, I just yeah. think it sounds like someone from EastEnders. <laughs> it's, yeah. You've got like Molly, and then you've got "Play time's over. You're dead." <laughs> A little. <laughs> Little not so deep voice Ray Winstone in there. All right, laugh. You want a fight? Uh, but anyway, anyway, let's move on. Let's keep things rolling. Um, as we have more news to jump on. But Valorant, for those of you that missed that as well, there's a new agent, a new map, and a new mode. Whether they needed the new mode, whether that'll start uh, dropping things off or not, well, maybe, maybe. The Graham Day soundboard is back. Molly. <laughs> <laughs> You are welcome. You can subscribe to the full soundboard for just one Twitch Prime sub. Da, 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 da. Uh... <laughs> soundboard not included. <laughs> ah, there we go. I'm browser for us for a second. Then uh, next bit of news: Epic wants to bring eggs to Android and iOS. No, that's E G S. And for those of you who don't know what that is that's the Epic Game Store. Epic wants to bring it to Android and iOS. This is written by Sharif Saeed for VG Twenty Four Seven. Uh, the Epic Game Store could soon expand into the mobile e ecosystem. Epic Game Boss Tim Sweeney has revealed that the Epic Game Store is coming to Android and hopes to also bring it to iOS. World domination. They're fucking going everywhere, Epic. GG. Uh, uh, the CEO told GameSpot that he wants to bring the same philosophy of developer freedom to mobile. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> <clears throat> Uh, we'd like to bring the Epic Game Store to iOS in the future, and we will bring it to Android, said Sweeney. We think it's a good way to help the industry move forward, and it's another way where Epic, as a game developer, had built up this audience around Fortnite and learned how to operate a distribution platform on PC and Android. Now, as we've done with many things from the Unreal Engine to the Epic Online Services, we, op uh, we open it up to all other developers to use with their games and are trying to serve the industry and provide a really interesting alternative to the ecosystem, he added. Indeed, the Fortnite Android launcher is now simply called the Epic Games app. Android specifically does allow uh, for third-party operated stores to exist on the platform. Amazon, Samsung, and many other companies have their own separate stores on Android, something you can't do on iOS. It would make sense for the app handling Fortnite to expand into a full-on store. Epic's long game is to make its tech and services ubiquitous. The publisher recently made the matchmaking and account services Fortnite uses uh, free to Unreal Engine developers who want to use it, so there's no reason it'll stop there. Uh, this is this is interesting. This is probably mm -hmm. one of the more technically boring articles that we have today. But, yeah. But I really, really like this uh, in terms of it, it kind of gives me a, a sight of where we could be looking in five, mm -hmm. ten years' time, maybe not even that long. So Epic, obviously, <clears throat> everyone's talking about the Unreal Engine 5. As we finished the stream yesterday, we raided... Uh, Paul, aka Paul two seven zero seven TV, um, we raided his channel. And I went in there. Paul was playing Warzone, but he's generally a FIFA streamer. Um, and he and his community were talking about the Frostbite engine that's used in FIFA is mainly an FPS engine, and it doesn't get the best out of the game. So they were talking about these rumors of Unreal uh, being the engine that they're gonna, gonna use. I think it's just shit myself because I couldn't find anything official on it. I would have included it in today's news if that was the case. But um, but even still. The Unreal Engine is that good that that other communities are already starting, whether yeah. it's actual news or just starting rumours about, oh, this looks so good, we want it. The, that Lumen in the Land of Nanite trainer, uh, trailer, uh, that gameplay demo preview thing, uh, it, it showed you the, the lighting yeah. textures, the um, geometrical uh, texture generators and stuff like that. So that looks really cool. Really good engine, backwards compatible, forwards compatible, free to use for most developers and then the pricing system is quite fair as it goes on for bigger developers so once you earn a shitload yeah. of money they'll take money but not as much as they used to do they're taking less money off you um as well as that if you want it to play across multiple devices across the switch across pc across mobile across playstation across xbox like fortnite does with its matchmaking lobbies and the ability to uh, have squadding and, and across all of that they'll give you all the technology for that for free it's like wonderful and now they're, they're saying okay not only do, does the epic game store exist on pc as well we're bringing the epic game store to mobile on android and ideally would like to have it on ios so it's just amazing to see one company doing so much i'm saying it's amazing with a 
with a little bit of hesitation. The downside is everything Epic's doing is lovely and sounds lovely. But if they carry on, they get an incredible amount of power. Um, mm -hmm. And with great power comes great responsibility, says uh, Uncle Ben from Spider-Man. Um, uh, is it good for one company to have so much responsibility? Hmm. Well... We've we've seen this. I mean, on just the topic of the Epic Game Store, I love the fact that there's more than just one place that I can get my games from because we've seen it with Steam. They was the market leaders for so long in there, but now we've got things like the Epic Game Store. Uh, we've got uh, what's the other one? Fucking uh, Gog. Gonna help me. Uh, Gog. We've got Gog as well. Uh, but there's various different places that you can get your games from for the PC which obviously has infuriated a few people because they just want one launcher on their PC just to load up the games and have all, all their collection of games. But if you're getting the best deal for your games elsewhere, that for me makes sense. It's very similar to if you go to game, you're probably going to pay £55 there. But if you go to CEX down the road, it may be second hand, but you're going to get it for 25 quid less. There's different places that you can get your games from, not to mention the likes of Facebook Marketplace and people just buying and selling games between each other. I like that. However... If your platform then is available to be on everything, uh, so there was talks, it didn't feel that long ago that um, Microsoft and Nintendo was in talks to potentially bring the Xbox Game Pass over to the Nintendo Switch. So not only will you just be able to play uh, your normal Nintendo games, but you'll be able to go into your Xbox Game Pass app, I imagine, on the console and be able to play your Game Pass games on there while you're on the go or when you're in your house or something like that. That, for me, again that's a nice little partnership and it just kind of reaches out to the Nintendo Microsoft thing that they've been doing for quite a while now. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. If you, if, if it's everywhere, then the, the amount of control that they'll have over the market, I can't say it's not going to be good because there are at the moment, they are doing very good things to help out a lot of people, i.e. game developers that may not be massive, uh, the little indie studios and they're getting a bigger chunk of money rather than it going through what used to be the steam green light, um, they'd get brought onto the system and then they would take a massive chunk of whatever commission they make off it. That wasn't the best business model, but it was the only way for people at the time to be able to get their game seen. And especially you had the community behind just pushing your game forward um, into the spotlight. I think there's going to be a lot of fine tuning over the next three or four years as to what we're going to see. I don't think there's going to be many people that are going to be challenging Epic. I also think that their Unreal Engine has got the entire world talking about how good games can look. Even though it was written ran on a PlayStation 5, it's going to run as well as that on PC and Xbox One. It, PlayStation 5 isn't going to be the only console that you're going to see Epic, um, no pun intended, Epic Games and what their graphical <laughs> prowess can look like. Even the not, even people who aren't massively into video games would have seen that trailer and go, Jesus fucking Christ, that looks amazing. Like, that is the pinnacle of what games can look like and run like. And it's just all attired to the Unreal 5 engine. It's going to challenge a lot of the other <clears> engines <throat> like Frostbite, uh, like the Fox engine, like whatever other engines uh, that are out there. It's going to challenge them to tweak, finesse, and potentially try and make theirs look as good or try and run as good as what the the bar is now at Unreal Engine. Yeah, I mean, it, it's good to see the, the bar being set so high before the generation properly starts as well, because, yeah, we're probably not going to hit that in terms of gameplay straight off. It's standard, but we will yeah. surpass that um, almost definitely within video games, and it's good to know that we'll be playing stuff that looks that good. Uh, yeah, it's, it's all right to make a for-purpose designed for the engine uh, with hardware in mind demonstration that lasts 10 minutes. But mm -hmm. to do that for something that lasts 40 hours requires insane amounts yeah. of input. That's why video games take five, six, seven years. Or, uh, like big first party ones take five, six, mm -hmm. seven years to it because that level of detail goes into it. But we will get that. Um, you see, that's the difficult thing to to try and tweak down into. Like you said there, it's like single player story driven games can potentially take like four to five years that's just getting the writing down the development uh the direction of what they want to be, uh, the scenes to look like and uh, every, all the mechanics that go around it whereas every single year you will get titles that have a number at the end of them i.e sports games uh racing games or whatever it may be that are yearly titles where you may see either major changes in the way that the engine looks which may break a lot of components in the games and you ain't going to see 
a good version of those games for a few years down the line. There will be good parts about it, but there will be things that will get broken along the way, especially when it's a yearly title. You've got Modern Warfare. It's like, I- I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, until this Modern Warfare now, Black, uh, Black Ops was okay, but before that, we had three or four years of probably some of the worst Call of Duty games I personally would have played, and I'm not a massive FPS player, so take that with a pinch of salt. But yearly titles are very difficult to be able to try and create new ideas in there because you get nine months, if that, to be able to take from the end of your your game going gold and getting released until the next game starts de- starts being stops being developed going gold and then getting released. It's a very difficult cycle to try and keep up with. Yeah. So this new wave of console games that we're going to see, it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to see what what we're going to get from yearly titles. The first couple that come, that'll come out, I, I, again, I just, I don't know how to put it into layman's terms, but it's you probably aren't going to get the best out of the engine in the first couple of years, and no one should expect that. If you've been around video games for as long as we have, you'll know that the, when the first games come out for new consoles, all the developers, day. yeah, all the developers are still getting used to the way that that console performs. Um, so you are going to get a lot of jankiness coming out from the games that you're going to be playing but it's par for the course you are going to get decent games down the line three or four well maybe two two three years down the line you're going to be getting some insane games and that's just about the waiting game at this point in time uh i may have a little bit of a leakage um not me personally but the the uh, um the water was going on just covered in stuff so anyway mopping that up it's gone it's fine continue um <clears throat> Yeah, I, th- I think the good thing about the Unreal Engine 5 as well is they're trying to speed up that process. So less it'll probably apply less to your annual release games, sports games, things like that. But the idea of Lumen and the idea of uh, Nanite, the reason that the, um, the demo was called Lumen in the Land of Nanite, which does sound like a video game, but Lumen is the lighting technology... Nanite was the geometric technology, so Lumen creates dynamic lighting that looks really good on the fly. Uh, Nanite creates dynamic surfaces that looks really good on the fly, be it grass, be it rocks, be it trees, be it whatever. It can just generate shit loads of textures that you don't have to spend months months and months putting together, developing and checking, so it can just do all that on the fly. You throw in your data and it'll spaff it out. So having that technology, it means that that the quality of games that we can get year upon year could be huge. I mean, in terms of what that gives us 40, 40 hour games, I mean, that's immense. The amount of time saved there means that we either get more games more often or we get games at the same pace, but at a much higher caliber, which is really good. But Epic are kind of the nailing it in that sort of sense. It's interesting to see how Epic are, are doing all this on the back of one game. Fortnite is the catal- uh, the catalyst for all this. Uh, where is it? There's a... There we go. Uh, we'd like to bring the Epic Game Store to uh, iOS in the future, and we will bring it to Android. We think it's a good way to help the industry move forward, and it's another way Epic, as a game developer, had built up this audience uh, around Fortnite and learned how to operate. But like, the fact that they say that this has all been built, the audience has been built up around Fortnite, one video game has, I mean, not that Unreal Engine didn't exist and not that Epic never had any other games outside of that, but Fortnite on its own has allowed the Epic Game Store to be pushed uh, onto PC, now onto I, I, uh, Android, possibly onto iOS, uh, allow them to give away free games like GTA, uh, allow them to do uh, further advancements with Lumen Nanai reduce the costing, changing the, uh, the the way that they have um, their business models so that, that developers can, can take more of the money and the capital that they get from the game at first. It's only when they hit certain thresholds that they start paying uh, Epic for them. I mean, that's all, it is all wonderful, but what happens when Fortnite 2 doesn't, doesn't do as well? Uh, when, when Ninja's a 40 year old bloke on stream uh, flossing? And they're not get basically. I mean, not not anything against Fortnite, and I'm not not anything against Ninja. But what happens if their cash cow suddenly stops producing the milk that they need to run the business? Do that? Do we start seeing 
okay, well, you want to use Unreal 6. Yeah, that's fine, but there's now a, a $100,000 sign-on fee uh, and we take 20% of everything else. Do we see that? I mean, it is kind of worrying to see that they're building all this around Fortnite, but but maybe not, maybe not. Maybe they're building it in a way that, that they're allowing the business to stand on its own with multiple legs rather than putting everything just on that one leg of Fortnite. Well, you end up wheeling out Unreal Tournament 4. That's what we want to see. Yeah. I'd love to see a new Unreal Tournament in that new engine. Oh, God, it'd be so good. I think I think that's what they should do. They should name all video games based on the engine that they're on. Frostbite Football 12. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, one more article we will run through uh, very quickly before we jump off stream and then jump back on again with, uh, with Masters of the League. And this final article is for... Board gaming and Pokemon fans. Uh, Pokemon Battle Academy turns the training card game into a board game. Written by Mike Fahey for Kotaku. Uh, the article says, learning and trading, uh, learning a trading card game that's been around for a couple of decades can be daunting. Learning a board game with a box filled with everything one needs and succinct rules is much easier. So the Pokemon company uh, made the Pokemon trading card game into a board game. Launching worldwide towards the end of July, Pokemon Battle Academy presents the long-running trading card game in the simplest possible light. There are three pre-made 60-card decks featuring Mewtwo, Pikachu, and Charizard. Each deck has its own guidebook. Battles take place on a special game board designed to keep important card game information at players' fingertips. And if you can't figure out the Pokemon trading game, uh, card, trading card game in this format, then just give up. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm feeling good about Pokemon Battle Academy uh, as a means to finally get my kids into the card game. The understood boards and rules. They'll probably still want to chew on the cards, but who could blame them? Those cards <laughs> are tasty, says Mike Fahey. Um interesting i mean i i i mean this article was clearly written by captain generic pokemon man like me because it mentions mewtwo pikachu and charizard they're they're three of the, the most famous uh, pokemon and, and three of the ones that i like the most as well because they're prominent in the first gen and jobs good and, uh but whilst i play video games whilst i still play pokemon go and all of that stuff i don't play the trading card games beyond what i used to play at school uh, which was just one-on-one -on -one basically top trumps battles. Bibby, on the other hand, has streamed playing uh, the trading card game and so on before, so how do you take this, Bib? I'm getting this. <laughs> um, because I, I, I'm the only one in my house that, that plays the trading card game. I grow, Growing up, I had the trading cards, but nobody that I knew, they all collected them. It was a collector's thing back when I was growing up with Pokemon. It, you, you, had, you wanted to try and get the best cards possible. No one ever battled with them, and that was the one thing that I really enjoyed doing so I didn't get to do it that often so when they brought out the game I could play it on my tablet I could play it on my PC and things like that I absolutely adore playing it there is people in my family that I would love to be able to get into this like my sister she's only two years she's two years younger than me again she was the person that was massively into Pokemon she collected the cards as well but she never we never battled each other with them because we didn't really know everything to do with them however having this board game available definitely will help people especially like my, my nephews and things like that that are growing up now i would love them to be able to get into this kind of thing um as nerdy as it is i absolutely adore playing pokemon trading card if, if honestly if you've got a pc or a tablet that can run it play it because you will enjoy it and it's even better uh using the using the uh the game because if you was to go out and buy a trading card that's one thing that i need to know about this if i've got i've got a shit ton of uh pokemon cards uh, right here in my hands, actually. Uh, they are. Because uh, I'm a fucking nerd. They're not in like little collection wrappers or anything like that, but they are in a, an old school Pokemon tin. <laughs> yeah! Nerd. Uh, so I've got a ton of Pokemon cards here, along with the chip. Um. To fire, to, so obviously you flip and who goes first. I've got a ton of cards. So like these was that shiny man champ? Yeah, it was, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I absolutely adore playing Pokemon trading cards. Um, having this board game, I, I mean, I don't know how expensive it's going to be, but I wonder if I can use these cards because I imagine they're going to look like these. Um, I hope they do so I can take my own cards in with them as well. Uh, I love the little chat. I've got two Charmanders there. Carl says it. And second edition. Sign me up. Bibi got any swaps? Carl does have quite. Uh, do, do you still have all of your cards, Carl? 
Carl had uh, had books of them. Um, yeah. Previous time, I'm not sure if he still does anymore, but we'll find out shortly. No doubt. Um, the thing with me is, I enjoyed the collectible element, and I enjoyed that like the one-on-one quick battle element, but never played the full trading card game. And I've just loaded this up on on screen because these were useful and meant stuff to people that played Pokemon TCG, which is trading card game. Um, this is absolutely not useful whatsoever to me and about 95% of the people that were, were using Pokemon cards at, at school when I was at school. This, look at it, it's a fire energy card. You're just like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> don't even want it. <laughs> what, why? Why am I getting 20 of these feckers in a pack? I don't want the fuckers. Uh, obviously, they're useful in the trading card game. You need them to be able to, to, to do your moves and everything. That's where all of the beauty of it comes in. But yeah. for, for idiot like me, it was just like, nope, bin, bin. Or you'd you'd like did you ever do, did you ever do scrambles like where you'd throw a card and and we used to throw a card on the floor the scrambles and everyone would lose their shit trying to like fight to get this one card and you'd be like you'd show everyone your uh, your shiny Charizard one hundred twenty HP and you you'd go scrambles but grab a fire energy and throw it <laughs> and then you watch <laughs> you watch as a stampede happens everyone fights to pick up this fire energy card you're like I'd like it. <laughs> So yeah, that's what they remind me of. Being a dick in school. Uh, got thousands and codes for online too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. If you if you go if you, if you go to the shop and you buy a Pokemon a pack of Pokemon cards, there's a barcode on the back back of it. So if you've got an account with the TGC, you can type the code that's in the back of it, or the, the code that you get inside it. Sorry, um, like the QR code, and you can have your the cards that you've got in that pack loaded into the game, so you can play with them. It's amazing. It's, it's actually amazing. So I'm going to get this board game anyway because I want to be able to see what it's like and I can try and convince other people to come and play this with me. When we when we can finally get back into the studio, we'll do a we'll do a, a board game night where where Bibby gets oh, wrecked oh. by my Charizard. But if you if if you've got a shiny Charizard, I ain't playing. Uh, I do somewhere. Um, it's not the one that I like though. Uh, I think it's in. It, in my bedroom but it's it's not the what i like the original 120 hp charizard yeah whereas the one i've got is like a mega charizard or an x charizard or something like that something that's lost on me so it's technically better than the charizard that i want but it's but, it, but yeah. yeah it's a new gen one yeah 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 so it's not it's not for me. oh carl sending the same pictures let me see let me see let me see let me see, let me see. Uh, see if i can see if i can open this up i'm not sure if i can uh, 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 uh. Um, whilst I am trying to open this up, though, I think we should call it time there, so we can get set for Mask Masters of the League. So, do you want to? Uh, do you want to sign us off, Pip? I almost certainly do. So, thank you very much to each and every one of you that have joined in today, got involved in the topics. Obviously, the hosts, the raids, and everything else that goes above it, we very much appreciate it. But if you want to continue to be a part of this show, there is two ways that you can do so. If you find any news articles around the social media platform of your choice and do feel free to tag oh shit tag or shit feel free to tag or shit yeah <laughs> yeah uh chat bot most certainly was open then but there's two ways you can get involved uh, you can have a join our discord um and i, I put the article you see what i mean i fuck this up now i was <laughs> I got my eyes taken off it. The eyes was off the prize. But if you want to get involved in the show, there's two ways that you can do so. You can have a go over to our Discord, drop in the link to the social media, uh, to the uh, article that you want to talk about, give your thoughts and impressions. We'll give our thoughts and impressions. Um, but if you also want to get in contact with us, you can do so by hitting us up on Twitter, which is at We've Got Rubinio, at Graham underscore Day, and of course at Ice Cream Uploads. We'll take your thoughts and impressions and give our thoughts and impressions on the very next day, which is going to be when? Tomorrow, Mr. Graham Day. 10 a.m. Ish. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, everything's clinging on tech, man. Okay, there we go. This is image from Carl. So these are all Carl's uh, cards, Sun and Moon decks. Look at the energy, fire energy. There's always a fire energy. Told you. Uh, and 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 the rest. Uh, yeah, let's let's let, uh, let's see if I can find that. I don't. I can't find. Is it that? Yep. Okay. Uh, Oh, Balax, next image. He did send me another one. There we go. Let's put this back on as well. Whoop. There we go. Oh, and video games. And grass energies. Nobody wants a grass energy. Boo. But yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. All of the Pokemon cards. Um, but we will wrap things up. Ah, I've got things all over. Give me one second. Oh, oh, breaking, breaking.
There we go. There we go. There we go. Um, so, yeah, as Bib said, 10 a.m. tomorrow for the next episode of The Scoop. We are going to go offline now, though. We will be back straight on. I say straight on. Probably about 10, 15 minutes if we have to get everything in place for Master of the League. But we will be straight back on. So if you want, you know, just to linger in the channel, talk some much yourself, the chat still works. So feel free to have a bit of a chinwag if you want. If not, just sit there, chill out, go grab yourself a brew or whatever, and we will be back on with, what, we on episode 9 now? Episode 9 of uh, Masters of the League. So, yeah, feel free. Feel free to stick around. But anyway, we're going to drop off back in 5, 10. If not, we'll see you 10 a.m.-ish tomorrow morning. Have yourselves a fantastic day. I mean, probably don't want to go outside. It looks a bit grim in Manchester anyway. But, you know, wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, what should they be doing, babe? They should be staying frosty, which will be out in this weather. <laughs> Stay frosty!